Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. It's me, your boy, Malik. And I'm bringing you a new effect. That's right, the trail effect. So before we get started, I want to do a few things. Tell you a little bit. And get you set up for doing this effect smoothly. First and foremost, you need to have a still background when you do this effect. If you're going to be shooting it, use a tripod. You don't want anything moving in the background. If you do have things moving in the background or you want something moving in the background, it can still be done, but it will take a lot more time, be a little bit more difficult. You got to be very, very precise with some things if you want to move in background with this. Secondly, you need to be able to get your snapshots to a location that you can quickly access from Pinnacle Studio. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you go to Setup, go to Control Panel, and in the control panel, you have your watch folders. These are the folders that all of your media is watched from Pinnacle Studio and it drags it into the media library. Now, you can see that all of mine are on uh, the letter on my drive is G. And that's an external hard drive that I have hooked up to here. So if I want to import to a specific drive, I can go to import. And now I have my snapshot directory. And you see I've set it up under my G drive again under photos in a folder that I named Pinnacle Avid Snapshots. All you got to do is click on this little folder here and you can browse to the location on your computer and then click OK and you'll be good to go and you'll have your snapshots going to a location that's easy to access from Pinnacle Studio. All right. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. Got that done. Let's get on to the effect. All right. You see I got my video clip down in the timeline. If I move the playhead across, you'll see that it is a still background of an individual dancing, doing some wonderful ballet. Look at those pirouettes and twists and turns and flying and floating in motion. It's so beautiful, I can't believe it. Okay, anyway, uh, I lost track of what I was doing. But anyway, you want to go ahead and determine the positions where you want the individual trail effect to take place. You probably want to get them like in locations that are split kind of evenly because you're going to have still images across the screen that are frozen in position and you don't want them overlapping one another and you don't want them all bunched up in one position. So try to spread them out evenly across the uh, frame or the, the screen. So I like this first position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a timeline marker here. It's going to add it right down here to the bottom. I'm going to go to another position that I think I like, which is right about there. I'm going to add another marker. Go to another position I like. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add a marker there. And then I'm going to go add another one here good so now that I got my markers in place I'm going to use these markers to take snapshots so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first marker this is going to be where my first snapshot is going to be taken it's also going to be where I'm going to line up that same photo for this marker so that it freezes in position so I take the first snapshot And you'll see that it's going to save it, probably going to save it right down here because I already have it set up to be saved in this location. And yes, it went ahead and saved it for me. Beautiful. And so I'll just keep going along. And I will click on the time on the marker so that it's don't drag to it. Click on it so that you know it's exactly at the right position. Then I'm going to hit snapshot again. Once it's done, I'm going to click on the next timeline marker. I'll hit snapshot again. Click on the last one and hit snapshot again. All right, so now that I have all of those set up, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to take a snapshot where there's nothing on the screen. The reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to actually make the photos or the trail fade 
off the screen as you saw in the demo. So I have it here right now. If I click take snapshot, it's going to take a snapshot of this. I'm not going to do it again because you'll see I have one saved right here already. That's my preference. You don't have to make the uh, trailed images fade off the screen, but if you want to, I'm going to show you how to do it. All right. So now that I have my images, I need to make them into transparent background images. So I need to take, I need to remove the background from these. You can use programs like paint.net, Inkscape. Uh, you can use Adobe Photoshop elements with the magic extractor, or you could use Adobe Photoshop and I'm going to use Adobe Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm going to go to file open. And I'm going to find the image that I made. Let's go with this one here. I'm going to open it. Now, the way that you remove the background from these images or one of the ways, there's a whole bunch of ways you can do it. But one of the ways is you first go and you unlock the layers of the image. So if you click on this little keypad here, double click on it. You can name the layer if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just going to click OK. And then you go to your quick selection tool. And I'm going to choose the regular quick selection, not the magic wand. And I'm going to choose the size that I want it to be. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to drag this around here. Now what it's doing now is it's actually selecting what I don't want to have. Now you see it took some of her face out. I didn't like that. So I'm going to click the minus sign and I'm going to move it back so that her face is not selected as one of the things to take off. And neither is her neck. Now I don't need it to be perfect right now. So I'm going to click on the plus sign again. I'm going to keep going around. And that's pretty good for right now. So what I'm going to do now is I need to get these other elements in here as well. So I'm going to go on the backhand side here and see if I can get that. Messed it up some, but that's okay. I can fix everything. I'm going to click on the minus sign. And now I want these to be included. So I'm going to go down and around. And for this, I don't have to actually be perfect. And the reason why I say that is because the background is not moving. So if I get a little bit of the background in with her, it's not going to really matter because the background doesn't move. So you're not really going to see that it's not a perfect image, which is the cool thing about this effect or one of the cool things anyway. Okay, so now that I got all my marching ants around here, let me fix this real quick. And it's pretty good. I mean, it could be better. I could really get into some of these crevices if I wanted to and get it perfect. And you can if you want to. Be my freaking guest. And this is about as good as I'm going to do it for right now. So now that I have all the marching ants going around the image, I've already unlocked my layer. Now all I have to do is press the delete key on my keyboard. And now you see the beauty of Photoshop. So you can see now that you have the image of the woman. The ones that I did for the, the demo are a lot better than this. I'm just doing it like this because it's you know, tutorial time. And I know you can figure out to clean that up if you need to. So now what you need to do is file, save as. And you're going to save this as a PNG image. And you want to save it into the same folder that your snapshots are going to so that you're in that same folder and it's easy to access them. And you'll be able to tell the difference, believe me. So you hit save. And I'm okay with the compression being small and I don't want to interlace. So I'm going to click OK again. Now, if I drop this down, you'll see that it's updated on here. And if it didn't update it, you know how to get it updated. All you got to do is right click 
in an empty space, of course, and go to quick import. Just choose the image yourself, which is right here. And now we got it. So you can see I did image 10. And now you see image 10 again, but there's nothing on the bottom. It's just all black. And that's because the background has been removed. All that's in this picture is the lady. So I'm not going to go through doing that with every single picture for you because that would be a waste of my time and yours. But what I will do is I will go ahead and show you how to layer them appropriately. What you want to do next is you want to stretch out your timeline. You want to stretch them out so that you get a uh, more precise when you put these images in, even though they'll jump lock right into place because of the timeline markers, you still want to be able to do your fades and other things that I did on here. So I'm going to drag my first image down to the timeline and you'll see it stops right there on the marker. I'm going to drag it all the way out to the end. And you got to drag them out to the end because if you don't, they'll disappear off the screen. And you don't want that now, do you? You want to stay on the screen. So then I have my next position. I'm going to click on here so I can see what it looks like real quick. All right. So I'm going to drag another image down. Now, this might not be the exact same place because this is just one that I did from earlier. And you can see it's not exactly the same place, but that's okay. It's just a tutorial. Then you want to do your next image that you save for the next timeline marker. I'm going to drag that down right over that marker as well. Stretch it out to the end. And then you got one more timeline marker. So there's one more image and it is right here. We'll drag that down. And we're good. Now this isn't going to look perfect because I took separate images, but it's pretty close. So when you play this back, you'll see, boom, she's, you got the trail going on. Beautiful. All right. So now that we got all that set up, it's time for the last part. We make those images disappear off the screen. So like I said, I have a picture of the background by itself that I took a snapshot of. So I'm going to drag that down. Bring it into place. I'm gonna, since it is a photo, I can stretch it out. And then I'm going to put my fade on it. Now, make sure that all of your fades are the same length, okay? The reason why is because it makes it look smoother, makes it look better. So I'm going to do all mine at, eh, that looks good. So now that we have all of that in place, what we want to do is we want to fade. Got to click OK, buddy. Got to click OK. You're going to get ding-dings if you don't click OK. All right, so we want to fade from the last one first. So because I want to fade the last one first, I'm going to bring the top one all the way to where the fade begins here. And I'm going to fade this one first because this will be the last one on the screen. And then I'm going to bring the next one to the fade there and I'm going to fade it back the same amount of time and continue to do that in the case I probably didn't even say this but oh well it's just life uh, to go ahead and change the duration of the fade. You want to right click on it, go to transition, go to edit, and then just type in what you want to do. And we're good. Now, I don't like the fact that this is still on here, so I'm going to stretch this more. I'm going to stretch this out further. It'll be easy to fix, though. The reason why I'm stretching out further is because what's going to happen now is the last one's going to start fading off before. The woman even gets all the way across the screen, and I don't want that. 
I'm gonna move everything up. A little further up. And I like that. That looks good. So when you go ahead and play it back. Get the beautiful ballerina with the beautiful fade going on. Going all the way across the screen. And then you get the beautiful fade away of all of the images. Now that's pretty damn nice. That's it. How to do the trail effect in Pinnacle Studio 16. Ultimate. Now, you guys know what I want you to do. That's right. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it. Like it. Live it. Love it. Hug it. Always leave me your comments because I will always reply to them. If I can't help you with something, I will point you in the right direction and get you the help you need. That's how I get down. That's what I do for all my, you know, Pinnacle Studio people out there. We got to stick together, man. We got to stick together, brother. We got to be strong. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.